All right, uh, today we're going to be doing um, the inventory system that we talked about in the last tutorial. Uh, as you can see, I've already created the inventory. Um, all I did was create this parent. Uh, you can see its position, the scale here. And we're using one of the three new sprites that I've made. Um, we have the med kit. Uh, the torch and the inventory UI which is just a block um, and it's used for the background and each slot for the inventory so you can see that then we have some text that I put up there um, for the inventory and we have these slots and each slot is basically where the items are going to go once we pick them up in our inventory. We have slot 1, slot 2, all the way down to 9. And it's we have that parented to the player. And we also have inside of our player script. Oh wait, no. So what we have what we want to do in our player script is create a way for us to toggle whether we can see the inventory or not. So we want to do inventory actor. And then we can in awake we want to do inventory dot or this this dot inventory equals sub dot get actor inventory UI or whatever you guys want to call it. So the reason I actually didn't show me making this was because I actually did a video on that and uh, the audio didn't record right and I actually think it's better for you guys to do it kind of on your own that way you guys kind of learn and you guys get your own uh, inventory uh, instead of just having to follow me and do whatever I do now we also want to create a new void which is going to be toggle inventory and then we're going to do this dot inventory UI dot set visible then we're gonna do the opposite of this dot inventory UI dot get visible. So we're gonna say it's gonna set the visibility to the objects to the inventory visibility, and then we're gonna just toggle it by adding this exclamation point. So it's going to so say this were true. If we have the exclamation point, it will change that to false and vice versa. Little tip. And then what you want right here is if set dot input dot was key oh. input dot was key pressed e. And we can go ahead and do this dot toggle inventory. And you guys may also realize that E is the same button that we use to open the chest. Well, I've actually gone and changed that right here. You can just change that to space. And then I changed the text to say, press space to open. And that's pretty much all that. I also um, made the map a little bit bigger because when you would go to, like to the edges of the sand like you could see black and I didn't really like that so I made the map bigger and that's about it so if we go ahead and run the game right now just let this load up a bit mm. Now we can hit E to 
open and close our inventory and when we come over to here we can hit space to open it or open the chest and that all works just fine now we want to actually add um, some items so let's go ahead and add a torch and a sprite renderer which is going to be the torch and basically what we want to do is whenever we walk or run into oh my gosh that, that was my stomach it like really rumbled i don't know if you guys heard that but that was kind of weird but whenever we um run into an object we want to pick it up let's make that 0.5 actually 0.75 just so that it's not on the same layer as the chest and then we also want to give it a new script let's go ahead and create a new script and call this item controller uh, put it in the scripts folder and Now, um, we have a lot to do. So first we want to get the position of, oh wait no, not in the await. First we want a couple values for the position, for the player, oh wait no, the position for the object. Vector 3, then we want the player, which is a sub dot actor. And then we also want a Boolean that says, actually, no, we don't need that. And then we need, um, what else are we going to need? I don't think we're going to need. And then we're going to want to get a boolean that says assigned parent. And then this will change whether or not the item has been assigned a slot. And then we want a slot number, which is just a number. And then we want item UI, which is... Ooh, I forgot to do another step. So I also added this. It's basically the same as the chest UI, but I lowered it down a little bit more. And I want to create a new component. And what it does is it will say like when we pick up an item and stuff. So if we go ahead and do call this the item UI. Um, controller um, there we go item UI controller oh there it is so we're gonna wanna get an uh, we're gonna reference this behavior and then we also want each of our slots. So we want to do one equals sub dot get actor slot one. And this is where it, it kind of gets tedious. Uh, and we have a lot of the same lines of code. So we're going to copy this as many slots that you have. So we have nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's make that two, three, four. And then you guys can go ahead and do this with as many slots that you guys have. Six, seven, eight, nine. We wanna change this to Two, 
plus 3, plus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And now what we want to do is assign these. I'm going to do this dot position equals this dot factor dot get position. And then we want to get the player equals sub dot get actor uh, player. And then we want to do we want to reference the, the item UI equals sub dot get actor item UI that's what I have it called in the scene dot get behavior item UI controller behavior item UI controller behavior and then that's all we need for the awake and we're gonna get a little bit tedious again in our update function so first we want to do if so if our item does not have an assigned parent probably help if I put it, this before that but if we do not have an assigned parent then we can go ahead and ask if this dot position dot distance to this dot player dot get position is less than one then we, we're going to start asking if our slots have children. And basically when we assign the item to the slot, we're going to move the item to that slot in the inventory. We're going to parent it to the slot and then we're going to so that it's a child. And then that's how we're going to see if the slot has this slot is empty. So we're going to do if this dot one dot get children it's also important that we you put them in order so it's going to go down the list so if we pick up one item and our inventory is empty it's automatically going to go to slot one and then slot two and then slot three and then if we use the item in slot two it'll go to slot two um yeah, so if the length equals zero, then we will just say, um, we're going to create actually another void, which will be um, assign slot. And then we're going to ask for, we're going to ask for which number slot and we're gonna which will be the actor and then we can go ahead and get back to that later then we're gonna do this dot assign slot and we're gonna pass in this dot one um and then yeah if we're gonna keep on doing this then we're gonna do else if this dot two dot get children dot length so if he has no children equals zero I tried to do it like get child um, and then have it be a boolean but that actually didn't work in superpowers it worked in unity 
but not in superpowers. This dot assign slot. This dot two. Oh, I need water. Okay, let's hold on. That's a lot better. And then we can copy and paste this. Uh, that's 30, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All the way down to each of our slots. <clears throat> and then we're going to change each one for each of our slots. Yeah, that's right. Until we're finished. Okay, I'm getting a little bit confused looking at all these. I should have done them one at a time, but oh well. Six. Seven. Eight. Did I create 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I skipped 8. I don't know how I did that. Yep. And then it's going to check each of the slots, starting with 1, going all the way down to 9. And then, if 9 does not have, or if 9 is also full, so if our entire inventory, each slot is full, then we're just going to do, and we're going to display that in the log, and we can just say inventory full, destroying And then we're going to do this dot actor dot destroy. Oh. And that's that. Um, then we want to do this. So whenever we want to assign an item a slot, we want the, to set the parent to the number variable that we get or the slot that we get we're asking for let's change this to slot yep to the slot that we're going to assign our item to which is passed in on each one Ooh. I just realized that that's right yeah, I kind of rushed through all these, but you guys should take your time and do them one at a time. I kind of rushed for the tutorial, but I'll make sure they're all correct. But and then we want this dot actor dot set local position to zero zero zero. And we also want to do this dot assigned parent. So it will no longer check to see if uh, slots are open because we've already been assigned a slot. And we want to do this dot. Actually, no, we can't do that yet. Um. Then next, we want to go into the item UI, and then we want to do a couple things. So I want the item UI to not only update when we pick up an item, but in the future, I want to implement a lot of different things like cooking. So we could have, and then this is going to take care of that. So if we do cooked an item, so if we have like meat in our inventory, it's going to say like cooked meat 
or put meat in the furnace or whatever. So we want to do item text. And we're going to pass in a string. And then a timer. This is going to be number. And then we don't need the awake. All we need is the update. And we want update item. Actually, yeah. Then we want to get the item, which is just going to be a string of what the item is. And we're going to do this dot actor dot text render dot set text to be this dot item text plus item so it's gonna display this and then it's gonna give the name of the item and then in the editor in the scene we're gonna change this to be like um, you have picked up the name of the item and we're gonna set this dot timer equals 180 um, we're gonna have this display for three seconds then we're gonna set it back to nothing um, and we set that to 180 because 60 times 3 is 180 because we're running the game at 60 frames per second and then we're gonna do minus I'm pretty sure there is like delta time uh, I'm not entirely sure I know it's in unity I'm, I don't know if it's in superpowers, I haven't used it in superpowers, but I can check and then we can change that in the next tutorial. And then on the update, we're just going to do minus minus this dot timer, and that's going to take away one from the timer every frame. And then we're going to check if this dot timer um, is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to just do this dot actor dot text render that set text to be nothing and then back in our item controller we want to say um, we want to say hey item UI so this dot item UI dot and then we're gonna access the void update item and then we're going to pass in the string, which is going to be this dot actor dot get name. Uh, so there we go. Um, now we can go ahead, make sure everything's saved. It is. Now we can go ahead and run the game. Ooh, wait, no. I forgot to do something. Uh, so in our item UI, we're going to set the behavior to that, and then we're going to say you picked up, and then we're going to want to put a space after that, so there's a space between that and the item. Uh, and then let's add a couple of these. Make I want to make a med kit just to show you guys how it works um, yeah. um, then we can add like a couple of torches and then we can pretty much fill our inventory It's like really lagging. I don't know why. Probably because my my computer kind of sucks. I'm gonna upgrade soon. I hope. Um. All right. How many items do we have? One, two, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But right, we need two more. Three more, 
because we want 10. All right, that's good enough. So let me run the game. Wait, did I attach that script to? I hope I did. Did I attach? I didn't. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right, now we have to attach the behavior. No. We have to attach the behavior to all of the items because I'm dumb. This shouldn't take too long though. What? My phone's going off. It's really annoying. I hate iPhones. Just the, the vibration noise. I know that kind of sounds stupid, but not all phones make the same um, vibration noise or at least I can tell the difference and the one on the iPhone just bugs me I think there is a way to change it though just kinda finding something to ramble about while I give all of these items behaviors why does it keep doing that? That's annoying. Now I have to like take my time because it was being dumb. Uh, almost done. Two more. All done. All right, now we should be all set and good to go. That's that's my fault. I was rushing. I don't want to make this tutorial too long because I know there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover. So we can toggle our inventory with the E, and then it says we picked up a med kit. And then we can go ahead and pick up a torch, pick up another torch, pick up a med kit, and we can just keep on picking up items. And then once, all right, so now we have a full inventory. We get the log that says that it's destroyed the item because our inventory is full. And we can open the chest with space. And then there we go. That's our inventory system. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, for the next tutorial, um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, comment down below what you guys would like to see next happen in this series. Uh, if you guys are making a 2D game, a uh, 2D survival game, and want help on what to do next. Um, I think next I might do uh, the chest. I think I might advance the chest a little bit more. And then, yeah. And then I also want to make the item stat. But uh, we can save that for the next tutorial. So, yeah, guys, there is the inventory. Uh, I could also fix the items so that they fit the slots a little better.